Guys, we're going to be getting a little bit of an early start here. Liz, ethereal phenotype and the confusing words already in the chat. How's it going tonight, guys? So tonight we're going to be opening up three of the Celebrations Ultra Premium Collections. This one's got a nice, funky little tail on it. But I've got three of these. I ordered four of them, but only three of them came today, so we'll probably do one tomorrow. Um, and then for the Digimon stream, I don't know what day we're going to do that, but for the Digimon stream, I got six of these boxes that just came today, the English version of the Digimon Classic Collection that I pre-ordered a couple months ago. So... One of these nights, we're going to do this, and I think this is going to be fun. I just don't know when we're going to do this. Um, so let me know, all the Digimon guys in the chat, whenever you guys come in, let me know what night would be good. Stampa, Mulate, Eric Dunez, Jimmy Cutlets, Charizard Hunter, and Zach. Oh, Zach's actually there. He says, how are you hunting when it's for sure in the box? Well, we're hunting for a PSA 10 or a BGS 10, I guess you should say. So I'm going to keep opening these boxes and keep grading the golden Charizards until we find one that gets either like a BGS 9.5 or a BGS 10. We want to get the highest grade gold card that we possibly can. So we're going to open as many of these as we possibly can, or I guess as we need to, to accomplish that. And I guess at the same time, we're going to be hunting for, obviously, the Celebrations Charizard itself. That's always going to be a hunt. Canadian Pokey Freak. Legendary live stream. Appreciate you stopping by. Yeah, Zach, we missed you last night. We did a box of evolutions and we pulled pretty much absolutely nothing. <laughs> I should have kept that one sealed. So yeah, we're going to do three of these tonight and uh, we're going to do one tomorrow. You're watching Archive 81. I've never heard of that. What is that? So three tonight, one tomorrow. And he might be able to talk me into also doing a Celebrations uh, ETB if we don't pull a Charizard out of these Celebrations packs. So if you guys don't know what all comes in these, these are pretty cool and you do get a lot of value back. Um, especially right now, you can find these. Some people can still find these in stores, these boxes. Um, you get these promo cards, um, and on eBay right now, they're on the secondary market. They're going for like 250, which I think is a great price. You get all these packs. I think there's like 17 packs of celebrations, something crazy. You got a bunch of packs of celebrations, but that's not all you get. Let's go over to the second sleeve. Oh, what's this? I think this is the booklet, right? All the promo cards in there. So there's what we're after right there. A golden Charizard with hopefully no chips, no scratches, no smudges. Hopefully we can get a good grade on one of these. It's a horror series on Netflix. Greg BP, AKA GBP, what's up bro? The coins, which are pretty cool. You actually get a metal coin in these. And of course we've got the golden Pikachu. I don't know if I'm going to grade the Pikachus this time or maybe just grade the Charizards to kind of cut down on grading fees. Loving the regular up. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Ryan Gunn says, what's up, bro? Loving the regular uploads again. Hope you're feeling, hope you're doing good. Yeah, bro. I'm trying to get back into uh, being a little bit more consistent on this channel. Since this channel is really what I enjoy the most, I'm going to spend a little bit more time it's one of my 2022 uh, New Year's resolutions. So here's the Charizard. Actually, don't I have like a... I thought I had a glove over here for handling these so I don't get fingerprints on them. Let me see. If I can get the glove out of here. But yeah, dude, one of my 2022 resolutions is to be more consistent on this channel. And I've really got no excuse not to be. Damn, I don't know where that glove is. 
We'll try to get this thing into a sleeve without touching it. When are we doing the Digimon? I would like to do it tomorrow, but probably can't do it tomorrow. Let's get this out of here and get this in a sleeve. Um, Dub Dub's in the house. What's up, Dub? Are they grading gold Charizards again? PSA is not. BGS is. CGC is as well, but I think I'm just about done with CGC. All right, let's try to... Uh... So, judging by the grades that I've already received, it looks like the main thing that they're looking at on these Charizards or the main thing that's really hurting them is not the centering, it's not the edges. The surface grade on all these gold cards is what has been the lowest. So we gotta look for, like I guess little scratches or dings on the actual surface. Look, see, there's like a little bit of chipping on the back. This one looks pretty good though. Actually, I guess I can pull out, I can pull out one of them over here. But yeah, the main thing that they're dinging these cards for at BGS seems to be the surface. So the lowest grade that we got from BGS was this one, this BGS 8. And Surface got a 7. Centering was 8.5, so that was kind of low on that one. But Just for a little bit of reference when we're looking at these cards, that's what we're really looking mostly at is the Surface. And I guess I can kind of see some... I don't know. I guess we'll find out. I'm probably only going to send the Charizards, like I said. So there's one. All right. Oh, wait, I forgot we got the pin. Charizard and Pikachu pin. Hell yeah. Hell with PSA, LOL, but if you want the most value, then yes. Yeah, I hope PSA does start grading them again, but hopefully they can figure out the issue with their uh, cases damaging the cards. So you get all these bonus packs. I think you get 10, right? Yeah, not 10. It looks like eight. So we'll save the bonus packs for the end. We'll start to open all the boxes and we'll save all the bonus packs out of all the boxes for the end. And I'll give you guys this code card. And then we'll dive into our celebrations and hunt for ourselves a nice little Charizard. Honestly, I really, I think this is probably the best product they've got for celebrations. I think you really get a lot of bang for your buck out of this. And I think that I think you can buy just the gold cards loose on eBay um, for like 150. So at least the Charizard is 150. So you get a lot of your value back from the box just right there. All right. We'll see what we can do out of these packs. <clears throat> I've already got a PSA 10. Actually, I've got two PSA 10s for the Celebrations Charizard already. But um, it would always be nice to add another one to the collection. So if we can pull another one out of here, I would still grade that. Never caught one of these from the start. Hell yeah. Awesome, Michael. Glad you're here. Groudon. Cosmog. Here comes Team Rocket. Secret Rare. And Professor's Research. Yeah, I went to McDonald's and ordered a salad because my fat ass needed it. it. Said chili juice. Didn't you say that on the last stream? Legit though, Nick, I think it would be amazing for Pokemon Let's Plays on your channel. Yeah, dude, I mean, I think we're all eagerly awaiting the um, Arceus game. I pre-ordered it months ago. So whenever that comes out, I think it's in like, a couple days, the 27th, I think. So I got no hit out of there. I'm definitely going to be playing it, so I guess it would make sense for me to figure out how to stream it on the channel while I play it. What do I need to buy? So I've got the Switch. I've got the... So, so when I've got the game, what do I need to buy to be able to live stream me playing the game on my YouTube channel? Is there some kind of cables or wires or something? What do I need to... I'm, I'm very novice at video game streaming. Yeah. 
And by novice, I mean I've never done it. Open these from the bottom. Seem like they're all so close to, all the cards are so close to the top. Groudon, Cosmo, Team Magma's Groudon, that's the hit, and Mew, and there's a code card. Capture card. So I don't even know what that is. I'm, I'm going to have to look into it. You'll need a video capture card. Hit me up if you need help finding one. I guess I do kind of need help finding one since I really don't have any clue what it even is. But if I can figure it out and it seems easy enough or it seems like it's not complicated, not too complicated, that'd definitely be something that would be an option I'm willing to explore on the channel. I'm going to put our little friend here. Oh, will it not fit the PSA stand? Oh, shit, I didn't even think about that. BGS card won't fit the PSA stand. I mean, I guess that should be too, that should be expected. I didn't even think about that because I've got a lot of BGS cards. I was going to put our little, I guess we can still put it back here. Put a little buddy on display. Let me switch over to live chat. Liz B. Ann, are there any other options you're willing to explore? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Reshiram, Cosmog, Zamazenta V, so no classic cards there. It's not too complicated, just some USB HDMI connected to a little box. I mean, I'm sure a couple quick Google searches I can figure out. Probably just an Amazon search. I can figure it out. I just need to get the hang of it. Confusing words is back in here. Reshiram. Palkia. Xerneas EX is our hit. Decent hit. And Flying Pikachu VMAX also. We'll sleeve this bad boy up. But yeah, it'd be nice if we can pull another Charizard out of here because I think the only thing I'm missing still um, is because I sent my Charizards to get graded, my Celebrations Charizards, I don't have one in my binder to complete my binder collection. So if we pull one that looks rough tonight, that'll go... Uh, that can, that can be a binder card if it looks like it's not something worth grading. Since I've already got two tens, I'm probably only going to grade a Charizard tonight if we pull one. If it's like, if it just looks perfect. Plus, I've got the three Japanese 25th anniversary Charizards at PSA right now. And I'm assuming all those are going to be tens. ho -Oh. Xerneas, Yvetel, and Lunala, and a code card. Seems like a lot more people start to flow into these streams now that we're doing more Pokemon and less MetaZoo. <laughs> I guess it is uh, the name of the channel. What weight do you usually sit at, Nick, in height? I'm around 5'10". And then right now, um, I'm about 200 pounds. Over quarantine, I got up to like 225. I was getting pretty big there for a minute. And by big, I mean I was getting fat and lazy. Um, but usually, before quarantine and before I've been sitting on my ass so much, um, I hover around 185, 190, so 200 for me. There we go. This will go in the Pikachu binder collection, full art base at Pikachu. The 200, I'm like 201 right now. I just weighed myself before I started the stream because I just ate. So 201 nighttime weight. But yeah, Bridget, she's prepping for a bikini show. So she's doing her bodybuilder diet and meal prep. So 
ever since the beginning of the year, I've been doing mine too. I've been trying to eat a little bit better. Go back to low carbs. I've only drank once in January so far, so I've been cutting back on the alcohol. Twenty twenty two, we're trying to get it off to a good start, even though we started off with both of us having COVID. Zamazenta V, here comes Team Rocket with our secret rare. Yeah, I was I was gonna do a powerlifting meet last year, um, but they ended up canceling it because of COVID. So I was gonna prep for that and then try to make weight for that, but then they uh updated their website saying the whole thing was canceled so i was like well back to door dashing whatever i want so galio you've only missed like half of one box bro i think zoo has a smaller audience everyone loves pokemon oh it definitely has a smaller audience but they're a lot more die hard i would say they're hardcore Nice, Reshiram. There's a good hit. And I'm not going to lie, opening up that Celebrations box last night was fun. It makes me want to buy some more boxes. I can't remember if I gave you guys that code card or not. There you go. So don't quote me on this yet, but we might get back to doing the uh, Friday Night Evolution streams. So confusing words, did you open up, um, what was it, Shiny Star or VMAX Climax? I thought I saw you post a video or post an upcoming live for VMAX Climax. Or has that not happened yet? Nick, I might be coming to Ohio in the summer and staying in our condo. Where in Ohio did you say you lived? Did you say you lived in Dayton or your condo was in Dayton? Yeah, Kobe, so what's the story on that, man? Thank you for the $5 donation. He says, what's up, brother? Long time no talk. Lost the Pokey Kobe channel to the hands of Google, but Vive NFTs have been phenomenal. Send me your QR code. I will do that. I'll mess I need to message you back on Instagram. I know you sent me something about Vive. Um, so what, what's the story with, uh, with the Pokey Kobe channel? Why did it get taken? Because eventually I noticed that your videos weren't popping up anymore. And then I searched your channel and nothing came up. I searched my subscriptions and there was no Pokey Kobe in my subscriptions anymore. I didn't know what happened. I had heard that it got deleted, but I don't know. I, didn't, I never heard the story on why. So is your new channel called Kobe Collects? It's not called Pokey Kobe anymore? Professor's Research. So actually, that means I need to go sub to Kobe Collects on if that's your new channel. Oh, did we time someone out? Oh, the same, that same spam. I'm going to go ahead and ban him. It's not really gone. I can potentially get it back one day. I can sign in right now, but it only gives me two FA option for an option I don't have available. And there's zero support and no one to recover. So what, you got a strike or something then? Oh, nice, Birthday Pikachu and Mew. Birthday Pikachu's a solid hit. A YouTuber can check the name of his subscribers. Yeah, if you go to your uh, Google settings, you can also see who is subscribed to you um like and sort it by number of followers so like who has the most followers that follows you 
But I'm talking about looking at Kobe and or looking at my subscribers and seeing that Kobe's not there. Like my subscriptions, who I'm subscribed to. In regards to following people on social media, who are you guilty of following? Says Lizbian. I'm not really sure what you mean by that. Like who's the who's the worst person I follow? Like what's my guilty pleasure? I don't know. I don't really follow that many people, to be honest. Bam Media, what's up, bro? But now my new channel can be monetized, and the only way I can activate it is if I delete my old Google account. That seems like a super weird situation. Clay Doll, that's a classic hit. And Zacian V. But yeah, randomized. To answer your question, we actually do have an option now to go in and look at who is subscribed to us. And you can sort it like a whole bunch of different ways. And you can see all the names of all your subscribers if you want to. And I can't delete the old Google account without logging into that thing, so it's all messed up. Man, I wish I had a solution for you. It just seems like a typical Google pain in the ass situation. That sucks though, bro. All right, so that can, well, we've got all the uh, extra packs off to the side. So like I said, we're gonna open up all of the, uh, all the boxes, put all the extra packs to the side and we're gonna open all the extra packs later. So I think we get, I think you can do a Charizard hunt out of here because don't you get burning shadows? Oh, Darkness Ablaze. That's what I meant. So you do get Darkness Ablaze in here, so potentially out of the random packs, we can do another Charizard hunt. It wasn't a strike or anything. I just signed in. It says we need... Oh, two-factor authentication to confirm you. Normally it gives me Google or my phone. Huh. Damn, that sucks, dude. I'm sure there's got to be some kind of workaround. Yeah, I don't know. I did my, uh, I set up my two factor authentication years and years and years ago. So it's never needed to confirm me or anything because I always, every time I log in, I do it. All right, so I get our two promos. I think those, those go for a decent amount too. You can get some money back on those. I just pulled the gold Mew. Out of all the, says Ethereal Phenotype, out of all the Celebrations packs that I've opened, I've only pulled one Gold Mew. So here's our Pikachu. I might get, I might grade some of the Pikachus or one of them if I can pick one that looks better than the rest. So let's take a look at our Charizard here. Again, I'm going to try to get this out without getting my fingerprints on it because that's the kind of surface that it's got. All right. I guess we could about to do it like this. Well, that's just stupid. See, that's already got some kind of, oh wait, that's just dust or something on the back. I don't know what that was, some kind of dust. What the, I was trying. I'm trying to pick it out. I'm trying to pick it up without getting fingerprints on it. This one actually looks really solid, though. 
This is a really solid copy. Let's take a look at the back. This is solid, dude. I don't see anything on the back. That's on the that's on the card saver, by the way. The penny sleeve, by the way. This one's nice, man. I think this might be the nicest one I've pulled. So like I was explaining to the chat earlier, I've got one back there, a graded one from BGS with the subgrades to try to figure out what we need to be looking for on these. Like what a good copy looks like. And this looks pretty good to me, but the main thing we need to be looking at, the centering on this one was kind of off. It was an 8.5, but both the other ones that I graded were a 9.5. So the centering was pretty good on all of them, but the surface on all of them seems to be a big problem. It's always the lowest grade. But because they're not cut, because their gold cards are not cut the same way as a uh, card stock. So centering's not as big of an issue because there's not as much variation in how these cards are cut. But yeah, that, that looked like a good candidate for grading right there. So we've got our extra packs here. I, I believe we get eight. And we'll open up all those at the end. And again, we don't have our final box tonight. So tomorrow I'll do, tomorrow or at some point this weekend, there'll be another stream opening the fourth box of celebrations. But for tonight, we're just doing the three. I've been getting mine on eBay. Um, to answer your question, and I've been trying to look for them around the price point of two fifty. I really don't want to pay anything more than that. I, there's a lot of listings in like the two seventy five to three hundred range, but I just worked a five hour shift of missing my cutty. Zach, did you watch my video? Um, the autopsy for George Peterson came back, bro. The video on the main channel. You getting that me uh, that MetaZoo Wilderness on release? MetaZoo Wilderness is the first one that I'm not going to uh, pre-order because the pre-order prices are like 150. I think I've got a I've got a personal theory that Wilderness is going to kind of dip significantly after release below retail. So this is going to be the first one that I'm not going to pre-order. I'm going to wait and see what the secondary market is doing, and I think it's going to go down, and I'm probably going to buy it when it gets down closer to, like, the $100 mark because $150 right now seems like a little bit of a not great deal. Kobe, Chris tells me about that all the time. He's still holding on to that Batman. But Chris just crossed over... Um, he just crossed over his Kickstarter Mothman from a BGS-9. He cracked it out of the case and sent it to PSA. That came back a PSA-10. So that's like a $10,000 card. It went from $1,500 as a BGS-9 to a $10,000 PSA-10. And then he just graded his Collecticon stamped exclusive Mothman. Nice, another full art base up Pikachu. I love this card. He just graded his full art, or um, excuse me, his... Stamped, uh, stamp Collecticon Mothman, and that came back at 10. And it's the only graded copy in a 10 so far. There's been three other cards graded, and they were nines and eights of that card. So Chris is like, he's like the Mothman king right now. Chris is risking it all. <laughs> How about them crypto? Crypto's doing terrible right now. Oh, yeah, Kobe doesn't have a wrench. Because it's his new... Uh... Oh, hold on. I got to switch channels. I'm on Nick Strength and Power. I got to switch to uh, Nick Strength and Pokemon. There we go. I should be able to give him a wrench now.
All right, I think Kobe should have a wrench now. <coughs> yeah, I believe he's he he has a bet. He has that Batman. Yvettel, Cosmog, Imposter Professor, Imposter Professor Oak, Lunala, and a code card. Chris buys anything that has some trendy stock, but he does well. Laura, you've been late to the party the past couple of nights. I got my first box of Crypto Nation 2nd Edition today, and I pulled a reverse hollow Mothman and a full hollow Frogman. That's pretty good. Yeah, we, we need Chris to check his value. Uh, nice. I love these. They're so common, but I just love filling up my Celebrations binder full of these. I've got pages and pages of the uh, full art base at Pikachu. I think it's an underrated card. I love this guy. But yeah, I'm sure Safe Moon's not doing too good, Zach. <laughs> I know Dogecoin went down like another 5% today. They're common like beans. My cutty is a secret or secret rare. Zach, I do miss you, buddy. You need to come come back up here and hang out before the Arnold. Now that I'm COVID free, I'll have both you and Grant back over for something for Valentine's Day. <laughs> we could go on a six way uh, six way date for Valentine's Day, bro. Now beans and Bridget. And the dog and the cat and uh, Gus and the cat are all asleep. I have a Kickstarter moth at a BGS nine. Also, I wonder how much it would cost to regrade it through PSA. Well, it cost you about a hundred. 150 bucks if you crack it out and send an express. Just try to crack it out yourself. Oh, nice. Mewtwo EX. And send it over. I think it's worth the risk. Because even if it comes back a PSA 9, that's automatically worth more than a BGS 9. Just people prefer the PSA slab. But PSA just has this tendency to grade MetaZoo. It seems like a little bit easier than everybody else. Where do you snatch up these boxes from? I got them off of eBay. Um, so I didn't pay retail. I paid like two fifty a box, but to me it seemed like a good deal. <laughs> the best influencer, Chris, should buy me dinner for that Batman too. Chris actually, um, I do want him to stop by a stream, but he does. He actually has COVID. He actually just tested positive like an hour ago. He sent me a picture of it. He texted me this morning and said, my temperature is 103. And then his follow-up text to that was a picture of a positive COVID test. So poor Christopher is not doing too well. I'm working out and watching this stream, so I'm hyped. Do you have a favorite exercise or routine you look forward to the most? I'd say arms day on Friday is always my favorite. Biceps and triceps on a Friday. Another Pikachu for the binder.
Welcome, Travis. Travis says, hello, y'all. I'm new here. I've seen a lot of new people the past couple streams. Now that we're back to opening up Pokemon. And I did get all four boxes from different sellers. So hopefully that adds up a little bit of variation to this. So they're not all from the same case. Dark Gyarados is our hit. Very nice. Average Lisp Enjoyer <laughs> says sup. Chance Black, what's up, bro? How much is a box worth? Each ultra premium collection is going for like 250 to 300 right now. 250 would probably be on the good end, and like upper 200s is more of uh, what I'm seeing as the common listing. Always streaming while I'm slinging beers, hoping for a late night stream soon so I can hang. Yeah, tomorrow, if we do stream tomorrow, it'll probably be late. I don't know when I'm going to do this Digimon stream. It seems like a good Sunday night stream. What's your opinion on the value in the future of those blue sticker second edition NFT boxes? I bought one yesterday for 190 USD. I'm not a big fan of them, to be honest. I don't know what the future value is going to be, but honestly, it seemed like kind of a slap in the face that that was their big NFT sale for New Year's. It was just to slap a sticker on a regular second edition box on the outside of the wrap, by the way. So it's not on the inside. It's something that could be slapped on a box after the fact. So it was just a regular second edition Cryptid Nation box that they slapped an NFT sticker on. Honestly, I don't think they're... I mean, I don't really think they deserve that much value. I mean, I understand the scarcity of the boxes with stickers on them, but it just seems like kind of an afterthought of how can we make this NFT special? Let's print out a sticker and slap it on some regular second edition boxes. Rocket Zapdos. And Pikachu VMAX. Soon you will get the black label Zard from the UPC. I think if if one of them was going to be a 10, it was going to be that last Charizard that we got out of this box. Laura, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, okay. Great minds think alike. Zach, what have you been up to? Have you been opening any Pokemon? What was the last Pokemon product you bought? Maybe this weekend I'll go. Uh, it's been so long since I've been in an actual store searching for Pokemon. Maybe this weekend I'll hit up like a bunch of... Ooh, nice, Venusaur. That's our first base set starter we've got out of the, both the first two boxes. But maybe I'll hit up some actual stores tomorrow and go to a bunch of Walmarts or Targets and try to find uh, some retail price celebrations. That would be dope. Have you seen the MetaZoo sale Rudy is doing? I have not, no. What's he doing? Are you still looking to buy a base unlimited booster box? I remember you saying you wanted one for a stream. Honestly, no. I mean, I, I think there's going to be, to be completely honest, um, I think the another rocket, a rocket Zapdos again and a Pikachu. To be completely honest, I think the market is going to continue going down. I don't think it's bottomed out yet. And I think uh, some of the higher dollar vintage product, like Base Unlimited, I think it's got a little bit more to drop, to be honest. So I do, I am still interested, but I think I'm going to wait a little bit. I think, uh, I think there's going to be a little bit more wiggle room on the price of a Base Unlimited box. I honestly think it could go below $10,000 a box. And if it does... That's that'll be when I buy one. I 
I think it's down to like thirteen thousand, like twelve or thirteen thousand a box right now. And if you guys remember, like at the peak Pokemon hype, Base Set Unlimited was going for like thirty thousand dollars plus per box. It's dr like the drop has been crazy. Jay Taro, what's up? Long time to see. We've got a lot of the old squad here. Kobe, Jay, Laura, of course, Stampa. Confusing words is relatively new, but she's quickly becoming an OG. I guess we could call her an OF for OnlyFans. An OF OG. All right, so we're going to open up the third box here. And honestly, if we don't pull the Charizard out of celebrations out of the packs, I've got a uh, ETB up here. I'm going to go ahead and crack that open. It's in my sealed product collection, but you know what? It's 2022. We're cracking the seal. New year, new me. How the pool's been? They've been all right. If you're looking for one, check eBay. There's plenty on there. And I think the prices right now are, are pretty fair. Yeah, we missed you too, Jay. Long time no see. Who else are we missing? Who else haven't we seen in a while? Jess Lynn, we haven't seen her in a while. OFOG in the house. Yes, by all means. Thank you for that. Smash the thumbs up button if you are enjoying the stream. And if you guys want if you guys want to see more Pokemon content and you're liking the fact that we're back to uh, opening Pokemon instead of MetaZoo, make sure you thumbs up. Make sure you let me know. That's how you cast your vote for what I do. But also the other way you cast your vote is by watching. And I noticed that a lot more people watch the Pokemon <laughs> than the MetaZoo streams. I've been getting a little bit um, trigger happy on buying MetaZoo and doing a lot of MetaZoo openings. So we're trying to get back into Charizard collecting. Charizard grading and Charizard hunting. Back to our roots. So here's our Pikachu. I'm going to examine those later and maybe I'll send one of them. But I'm definitely going to send all the Charizards. And also subscribe if you have not subscribed yet already. So again, we're going to be looking for surface damage on these. That's going to be seems like the big thing i already see kind of a chip on the corner there but that seems like the big thing that they are targeting at the grading companies all right so let's have a look at this guy here again you know i don't really see any scratches or damage on the surface of the card BGS and CGC are grading the Charizards. We're not talking about PSA. So there is like some... A little bit of damage on that corner. I don't know what the deal is with that. Hmm. That's the only damage I see. The surface looks good. It looks like there's some... Might be some up top. Actually, that's rubbing off. Maybe that thing on the corner will rub off too. Oh, it is rubbing off. Huh. I don't want to rub it too hard. There's still a ding, though. Rubbed off a little bit. Yeah, that stuff is coming off. Huh. That's weird. So if that's not a ding... We might be good. This looks like a pretty solid copy to me, too. I kind of want to take this out again and look at what, what the deal is with the... I don't know. I'll do it later. It's interesting, though. That stuff is rubbing off. I might want to make sure that I rub that off before I send it in to get graded. Because they might look at that and not want to risk damaging it and they might not try to rub it off themselves you guys can see that down there though you can see where it rubbed off onto the it's not on the card anymore it rubbed off onto the sleeve okay what did i miss 
I just want one for my sealed collection. I missed how you took it out. They are held by, are they held down by plastic tabs? Um, yeah, I guess. I heard a good pull happens when there's 69 likes, says Liz. Liz is stealing a little bit of, um, a little bit of Laura's thunder there. So we got the coin and we'll get out the six or eight, I guess, random packs. But yeah, when I'm done with this stream, I'm going to look at those uh, Charizards a little bit closer and maybe try to rub off any whitening if that is what that is. Almost 150 people watching right now. I think that deserves a uh, another round. I think we're going to have to open up this bad boy. Plus, ETBs are like super cheap right now. I probably paid double retail price on this. So I probably paid a hundred bucks for this ETB. And right now I think they're going for like 50 to 60 bucks back down to kind of where they should be. Lugia, Solgaleo, code card. Loyal Logic says, I want Pokemon to do a real mystery box where it's all current modern packs. That would be cool. The good old rub off trick. Confusing words. Are you drunk? <laughs> Clinging beers together. Do it. Open it. I want to see those Reshram cards becoming one of my favorite Pokemon. We pulled one of the really cool looking Reshrams earlier. Shining Magikarp. Nice. That's one of the big hits for the classic collection. That's always dope. Let me see if we can... Get that restroom out here for Jay. It's one of the first cards we pulled. That guy right there. What a beauty. Solgaleo is how it's pronounced. No, nah, I'm not going to pronounce it like that, bro. I'm looking for the metals art on eBay and a BGS 10. I can't find one. I was curious what it was going for. I know the PSA 10s were going for a crazy amount, like 6,000 or 8,000 or something crazy like that. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not at work and not drunk. I'm sorting my cards tonight. I find that's like the most relaxing thing to do when I'm on eBay or when I'm sorting cards, or when I'm putting cards in a binder is to put on a stream of somebody else opening Pokemon while I'm doing whatever it is I'm doing with my cards. Um, by the way, if the paint is falling off, it would be considered an error by all this that, an error by all the standards I've read, like the Neo Red foil issues where it looked scratched but wasn't, and it's printer error. I did complete this set, yes. I like your Nick Strength and Power Coins, but will you ever make a Nick Strength and Pokemon coin? That might be a good idea. There we go. We just talked about Reshram. We got Zekrom and Mew. Yeah, I have some Nick Strength and Power coins available on my eBay. I made them like forever ago, so I've been releasing them in batches of 25. I don't know how many exactly exist. I think maybe a couple hundred, maybe a hundred. PSA stopped grading them because of the paint coming off. Now, I did notice that even though BGS is actively grading these golden cards, they do, they do still move around in the BGS case. So it might potentially have the same issue that PSA had, but for some reason they haven't stopped grading them, so maybe no one has had any complaints yet. I love the vibes. Appreciate you, Chance. 
I do not have a Celebrations uh, Pokemon Center ETB. And my vape is about dead here. I wonder how they will hold up in a CGC slab. I'm not a fan of CGC anymore. I just, I can't grade with them. My express comic book submission has been with CGC for over two months now. And the turnaround time was advertised and is still advertised to be less than a month. But at the time, it was advertised as 17 days turnaround time. It's been over two months, and I haven't gotten a single update other than my stuff arrived. Oh, yeah, it's Delta 8 for sure, bro. Thank you, Face Channel. I appreciate you subbing. Ooh, we're almost at 69 likes. Maybe something magical will happen in this pack. Zekrom. Yvettel. Cosmog, Surfing Pikachu VMAX. Maybe next pack. Yeah, I, I do like the, the look of CGC. I like their slabs, the way they look, but overall, to me, it just doesn't really seem... Ooh, there we go. And there's a good hit. The Umbreon Gold Star. One of the most valuable cards you can pull. And right behind it, one of my favorite cards. The full art base set Pikachu. I think this is still like a $30 card maybe. Back when Celebrations first came out, this was selling for $80 to $100. So someone might drop a peach. The peach is what it's all about. Live, love, ass. That's the motto. Canto Kitchen, what's up, bro? Hey, I pulled that Umbreon, said Zach. I hope you sold it, because <laughs> it was worth a lot more a couple months ago than it is now. Do you resell some of your cards? 100%. I resell most of them now. Because now it just pays for my collection. Anything that I don't want in my personal collection or anything that's been sitting around on my desk for longer than a couple months, I end up just saying oh, it needs to go. Plus, at this point, it's really becoming a space issue. I've got so many boxes of bulk just sitting around my office. It looks like I'm a hoarder. Ooh, the confusing words donating her peach for 99 cents. The first time we've seen confusing words peach. We've seen the melons, but we have not seen the peach. Appreciate you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. I still got it. It's minty. It does look like I'm a hoarder, bro. I've got, like, Pokemon stuff everywhere. It's so hard to, uh... Just such a pain in the ass to sort. Pokemon makes useless Fusion Strike almost a 300-card set. Meanwhile, Celebrations should have been over 200 cards, all hollows. Yeah, dude, I agree. I think uh, Fusion Strike was probably the worst opening I've ever done. The least exciting. I don't know, dude. To have a set that big for a set that underwhelming and then to have a set so exciting like Celebrations be so small, it doesn't really make much sense, but who knows what their motivation was. Yeah, I sell on eBay exclusively. Melons and peaches are both great, says Never Cold. Always drop the melons, but first time for the peach. Well, I appreciate you either way. Claydol and Zamazenta V. 
How many packs we got left? Four? Man, that Charizard is elusive. I think the Charizard is the only card from this set that is still over $100. Oh, no, that's wrong. What's the Mew going for? Is the Mew over $100? The gold Mew? If not, then the Charizard is the only card. Are you planning on streaming MetaZoo anytime soon? Will I drop by when you're streaming it? Uh, yeah. Um, I've got some Nightfall coming in. Uh, I, I had pre-ordered some Nightfall from, uh, from Australia and it had gotten delayed and delayed and delayed and they just now sent me the shipping notification. So I've got like maybe a case of Nightfall coming in. So I'll probably, the, probably the next MetaZoo opening I do will either be Nightfall or the, um, the Dimac shirts that are supposed to be coming. I don't think I'm going to be opening up any more Cryptid Nation 2 though. Oh, the Mew's only 45 to 50. Oh, Zard is below 100. Really? 80 or 85? I thought you were going to start it at 10. Like the XY Evolutions. Now we had to get an early start tonight. There we go. Shout out to Zach. Blastoise. So we got Blastoise and Venusaur. Now we've got to open up the Celebrations ETB. Try to get the Zard. Nice. All right. Last pack magic. And then we'll do the uh, all the extra packs that came with all these boxes. Liz B. Ann says, I blast from my toys. Why Why are you fooling in the chat tonight? I feel like Liz is always in the chat, but I feel like she's always saying very regular stuff. She's turned up tonight. I think Liz is Laura's alternate account. All right, let's get into these extra packs so we can do a little bit of a zard hunt in these for the uh, darkness of blaze zard we're not even gonna do the pack trick on these reverse golizapod and an Acel Gore and a code card. No Zard, no hit. The pull rate on the extra packs has been horrible in my experience as Pokemon. As I've had the same experience. Is Liz even a chick? Probably not. Yeah, it took me a while to pick up on the fact that her username is basically lesbian. Lesbian, if you say it fast. Single Strike Urshifu. Meredith Ports has got PSA 10 VMAX Zard. Very nice. Grookey, Score Bunny, Aaron, Snow Runt, Venipede, Sneasel, Reverse, and Zeb Strika. Non Hollow Rare, Code Card for the Code Card Snipers. Do some more Chilling Ring. I totally missed that with her name. I mean, I guess we could be totally wrong and we're just, we got our minds in the gutter, but Sawbolt Reverse. Oh, nice. Blissey V. But in all likelihood, I'm assuming that's what the meaning behind her name is.
How did you know BGS would grade metal cards? Um, it says they do on their website. But yeah, interestingly enough, I got two uh, in my last premium submission, or my last express submission to PSA, two cards out of my 10-card submission that said they would not grade them. So it said no grade, no charge, and they were just regular Digimon cards. They were um, the Taco Bell, I don't know why I'm doing the pack trick, the Taco Bell War Greymon promo card. And it's been graded before. I've seen graded copies sell on eBay by PSA. So I have no idea why they didn't grade those two cards, if there's something wrong with them or what. But they refused to grade the uh, Taco Bell Digimon War Greymon card from the year 2000. I usually don't look at the grades ahead of time, but they sent me an email. I haven't gotten, I haven't gotten the uh, shipment back yet, but they sent me an email for my invoice. And because it was 10 cards... I was expecting an invoice of over fifteen hundred dollars because one hundred and fifty times ten would be fifteen hundred, and it was less than that. And I was like, "Well, that doesn't make sense. Am I missing a card or something?" So I went and looked at my invoice, and it said no grade, no grade on my uh, Digimon cards. But there were other Digimon cards in that submission that they did grade. So I don't. I'm very curious to see what the deal is. Fat Midgets 112 says, My Laura Appreciation Peach. Hey guys, where do you buy booster boxes and cards? I use both TCG Player and eBay, but lately more uh, TCG Player than anything. Just for MetaZoo, I've been finding that the deals you can find on TCG Player are often better than what's on eBay. Yep, confusing words. That's 100% right. So it did come with metal cards, those Taco Bell Happy Meals or whatever. But the metal cards weren't what I sent. The metal cards, it came with a metal card inside of this Pokedex thing, but also one random regular Digimon card. So the regular Digimon card is what I sent. Now, I definitely wouldn't expect them Peonia. I definitely wouldn't expect them to grade the metal cards, but that's not what I sent, so I'm, I'm curious why they didn't. And here's the code card. Will you be opening up more UPCs on this stream? Um, we're going to open up one more Celebrations ETB, and then we're going to do one more UPC tomorrow. We already opened three UPCs tonight, but these cards here are from the Ultra Premium Collection. These packs here are the random packs from the Ultra Premium Collections. And so far, the pools have not been great <laughs> from these. I'm not even looking at the names of the cards because I'm seeing we're not getting any hits. Executor, non hollow rare again. There's a code card. Another Darkness Ablaze. A little blackening, not whitening, but blackening. I'm buying them on eBay, yes, paying about $250. It seems like the prices have gone down a little bit since the last time I bought an Ultra Premium Collection. And we get a Go Lurk non holo rare. There's your code card. But yeah, eBay primarily has been my, uh, my go-to for the Ultra Premiums. Man, I really hope I get a Charizard VMAX out of Darkness and Blaze. That would be sick. Found a lot of celebration stuff at Target recently. Yeah, I might make a trip. Rose Tower and Baratic, non hollow rare, of course. Code card. They're going down. I look on Facebook Marketplace for about 200, 225. Are they really? 
I've been seeing more and more people say that they've been able to find the ultra premiums like in Walmart and in Target. So it seems like there's people that are out there finding them for retail more and more often. Yep, I have a Ghost Rare Blue Eyes in my binder right now. Yeah, if you can find them for 200 each, that's a deal. James, where are you where are you finding them for 200 each? For 200 each, I'm about to buy five more. Any idea what the XY Evolutions Hollow Zard is worth? I think it's hovering around the $100 mark, but I could be high on that. A lot of prices have dropped lately, so... It could have gone down. Since PSA halted the grading of metal cards, graded metal cards have 2 to 3x. Yeah, I've noticed that. Nice. Rayquaza. Amazing rare. So that's the first hit of any kind that we've gotten so far. Well, I guess that's not true. We did get these, these beautiful cards right here, but that's not necessarily what we're after tonight. Man, the Evolution Zard is really down in the 60 range. Zekrom, full hollow, or I don't know why I'm saying full hollow. Just regular hollow. Crazy how the Zard is $100, but the booster box is $750. Makes no sense. Yeah, dude, I think the booster boxes are overpriced right now. Especially considering the fact that the booster that I opened last night didn't even have the OG Zard in it. So it's like... And the chance that you'll get a PSA 10 is so slim on an Evolution Zard. It's not like they're the secondary market's pricing in the uh, likelihood of a PSA 10 being way higher than it is. Yeah, I've been telling people, man, those Kanto Power Collections, they're worth it. You get some bang for your buck there. Kanto Power Collections are uh, never a bad move. I've had I've I've had some duds, I've had some stinkers, but I've pulled a lot of uh, a lot of good stuff out of those Kanto Power boxes. And for the price, you can get them a lot better than the booster boxes. Man, nothing in that darkness of lace. Yeah, these are pretty terrible uh pull rates. Did you see some of the new Hisuian Pokemon? Yeah, I saw the uh, Growlithe and what was it? The Electrode. Thank you, Dub, for that. I appreciate that. Dartrix Reverse and a Swana, non holo rare. Yeah, we're doing pretty terrible here. The thing that I hate about the Kanto Power Collections is that they're so, they take up so much space in the trash. They're so long and awkward that thunderous is our hollow. When you're waiting for trash day, I mean, they're just, they just take up a lot of space. Even if you break them down, they're so long and awkward. It just makes a mess. Oh, wow, we've got over 150 watching right now. Dope. If 
you're watching right now and you're enjoying the stream, make sure you hit that like button. We're almost at 100 likes, actually. Articuno V, Galarian Articuno V. All right, code card. Alona says, my pull rates are usually great, but today I opened 10 crap packs in a row and got one hollow. That sucks. Lesbian. <laughs> Not the only thing that's long and awkward and makes a mess. Yeah, she's definitely trolling. She or he is definitely trolling with that username and the comments. LOL, you're so right. The boxes and plastic are a bit much. Yeah, it's the plastic, too. It's like you can't... You'd have to cut the plastic up into pieces if you wanted it to not take up as much space. The plastic, like, can't be bent. It can't be folded. It can't be broken down. It just takes up a lot of space. Especially for me, when I was doing the crazy uh, evolution streams, we would open, like, ten boxes in one night. I appreciate you confusing words. Rillaboom, holo. So yeah, probably at around 200 viewers, we're going to open up the uh, ETB here, and maybe that'll be where we get the Charizard. I have four Ultra Premium boxes and one ETB. I can't decide if I should open any or just sit on them for a while. If you got four of the Ultra Premiums, you could open one or two. As long as you keep one sealed, I guess. Snorlax Hall, that's a cute Snorlax. I guess that's really all that matters. Get yourself an Amazon Shredder. That thing is amazing. What do you mean by that? Just a regular paper shredder? I've got a few of those, but... Magurna. The last six celebrations packs I opened contained zero classic cards. Man, that sucks. I'm literally about to do my first box break, filming it, putting it up on YouTube. Any tips? Sorry for the repeat message. Um... My tip would be make sure the lighting is good. I hate when people do uh, box break and the uh, you can barely see what's going on. Make sure it's well lit. Make sure it's not like in some dark corner of your bathroom or something weird. Oh, we did hit 100 likes. Nice. Very cool. And it could be seen the more plates. Wait, am I on the wrong stream? What I... Did I click the wrong one? Oh, I pulled up a stream. I pulled up my chat from last night on accident. It was like moving hella fast. I was like, what is all that stuff? Do you think Celebration set is cheap right now? I, I do, but I think also, like I said with uh, Unlimited, I think it's going to continue to go down. All right, so that was our last pack of random, and we're going to open up this Celebrations ETB and hopefully pull a Charizard. But yeah, I do think it's cheap right now. I think it's a good time to buy, but I do think it will continue to go down. I can't remember if this sealed on the top. Or, yeah, it did. Okay. So if you're really wanting to wait to the absolute bottom of celebrations, you can probably wait a little, a little bit longer and hold out for a cheaper price, but... All right, let's crack this ETB. You're going to pull a Mew? I'd rather pull a Charizard, Matty. But a Mew would be cool, too.
<laughs> I find it crazy that a Cantho Power Box is more money than a PSA 9 Hollow Charizard from Evolutions. Opening packs is very fun, but Charizard is not guaranteed. That's true. There are a couple of other money cards in there, though, that you can make some money back on. That full art uh, Mega Charizard EX is pretty cool. All right. Make sure we get our Greninja out of there. Here's a code card for you guys. I pulled a Ray Ray and a Mew on Christmas. Nice. I forget how many packs we get out of these 10. Jam says, in my experience, I pulled all my hits from celebrations out of the Pikachu boxes. That's an interesting tip. Oh. Who called the Mew? Someone called it. Someone literally just called it. Gold Mew, nice. Centering looks a little bit off on this one. Otherwise, I would grade it. Top to bottom looks pretty bad. Even left to right doesn't look great, but nice. Good call, good call. Maddie called it. Shout out to Maddie. That was a good call. Good job, Maddie. I don't know if Maddie wants this or not, but we're going to go ahead and give her moderator status, or him, Maddie, or him or her, whoever Maddie is. I'm giving you a wrench. Just because that was such an on-the-money call. Caught it like 20 seconds before I pulled it. That was dope. I wish the centering on it wasn't so bad. Flying Pikachu VMAX. Jonathan is calling a Charizard next. Man, I certainly hope so. Although I can't be disappointed with a Mew. Everybody's showing love to Maddie in the chat. Rocket Zapdos, nice. So we got a classic card. There's a code card. At least one Claydol or Shining Carp. Is the Claydol a sought-after one? Is that worth anything? I don't even think... Personally, I don't really have any nostalgic attachment to the Claydol because I, I don't remember that card at all. Cosmo, Lugia, oh, that orange, I was thinking it was a Charizard, Mew, code card. Do you think card grading prices will ever drop below what they are now? Yes, I think they'll probably go down to $50. In fact, PSA right now, um, is starting to do events. I think the next one is January 25th where they're going to uh, allow PSA members, uh, PSA Collectors Club members, to participate in a $50 grading event where it's basically like the... Uh, it's going to be similar to the MetaZoo Tops release. You're going to be in like an online queue on the PSA website waiting for the opportunity to submit your card for the $50 service. So right now, I think the cheapest service other than that is standard for uh, $100 a card. Express is $150, and then they're going to do these $50 grading events, which is still a shitload of money per card. I mean, realistically, 99.9% .9 of cards don't have that much value to them. Oh, put that over there. Yeah, Jay, I'm right there with you. 
I've got a lot of stuff that I still want to submit. Who's going to collect a con in Orlando? I was actually thinking about it. I think it'd be cool. That'll be the earliest opportunity to get a, get your hands on a wilderness. There's a clay doll. Someone called a clay doll. Very nice. Zach, what took you so long, bro? You missed the Mew. We pulled a gold Mew so far out of this uh, ETB. Nick, what's with the guy who goes to the lifting conventions asking Natty or not? His shorts have been popping up in my feed. I don't know who that is. Are you talking about um, Cassidy Campbell? Dark Gyarados. Nice. So another classic card. We've got one pack left, and then we'll do the uh, random packs. Can we get some last pack magic, some fire in the chat? 200 people watching right now. Let me make sure we didn't mix up any celebrations packs in here. We did not. So last pack of the ETB, fire in the chat. All right, there we go. There's some fire. All right, Palkia, Reshiram. Oh, did we get a shit pack? We did. Well, I guess there's a chance that a Charizard is in one of this one of these Darkness Ablaze packs. That was an underwhelming last pack for sure. We'll save the two Darkness Ablaze for last because that's our chance at a Charizard. Pikachu V. That's a little something something. Wait, did I not give you guys the code card? Darkness would be a better Zard anyway, in my opinion. Well, judging by the hit rates that we've had so far in the random pack section of the night, We haven't really done too well so far on these randoms. Stene and a Galarian Weezing, non hollow rare. Battle Styles. Pikachu figurine boxes have the fire, says so Jams. It's steamy, says Zach. Let's just see what we got here. Ball toy reverse and a mind shell, non hollow rare. My, gr my guess is brilliant stars will have bad pull rates. I think you're probably right about that one. My name is also Zach, says Fishy Shinks. All right, Darkness Ablaze, pack number one. Let's see if we can get a Charizard out of here. Tapu Coco and a Swana non hollow rare. There's your code card. And last pack of magic for the Celebrations ETB. And again, make sure you guys subscribe to or subscribe right now because tomorrow we're going to open up another Ultra Premium Collection and one day on this channel we'll have the grading results for these three bad boys right here. So if you guys want to know what these graded, that'll be on the channel hopefully in a few weeks. So subscribe if you haven't already. Last Pack Magic. What are the odds we get a Charizard out of here? Probably zero. Ra 
Reverse Dino. Is there anything behind this or not? Lugia, so it's not nothing, but a non-hollow rare. There's a code card for you guys. Awesome. All right, guys, cool. It was fun hanging out tonight. Good to be opening up some pokies again. I appreciate all you guys stopping by. This was a pretty successful stream. Make sure you hit that like button on your way out. Make sure you subscribe if you have not subscribed already. And as always, love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Pokemon. <laughs>